ready? Mary? Uh, I'm Mary Porter. Um, I lived uh, in New Cumberland for 87 years. I was born here. And uh, I'd like to introduce my partner, <laughs> Margaret Campbell. I'm Margaret Cullen Campbell, Sis Campbell, and I was born on 2nd Avenue, New Cumberland. I lived here all my life, 85 years, all been good. <laughs> and tell me about New Cumberland. Well, New Cumberland has quite changed from what it was when I was re first remember it. I lived here in this house, and um, it uh, has, has been altered some from that time, but uh, and I, the neighbor's hood has changed considerably. The Williams fa Williamson family that lived next door, and they were rather a prominent family. And the people who lived across the street are long gone. And where the, ha where the Masonic Temple is across the side street was once a small home. And uh, Dawn and Mary Jones lived there. And the Stillwells before that. Would that be Howard Stillwell? No, no. Uh, Mr. Stillwell, Mr. Uh, Ed Stillwell was uh, the person that was killed at the time of the uh, courthouse fire what in year? 1920, I think is the year. 1920. Um, what are your earliest rec recollections of the ridge here? Oh, it was tree-lined. It was very pretty. It was mostly maple trees. From I think there are a few pictures around uh, that show the maple tree lined street, both sides. Mm -hmm. and from the top of the hill um, down, and um, I think the part that has changed the least is from Lincoln Street down, probably. But above Lincoln Street, uh, it has changed considerably, yeah. mostly by uh, tearing down the houses. Some of and some of the places have not been replaced. Some no, nothing has been put in their place. Tell me what the street was like. Uh, Traffic-wise, oh, horses and buggies. <laughs> what year would that have been? That um, we would remember. Well, I, I was born in 1910, mm -hmm. so, so about along 19. about 1906, I begin. I think for those are my uh, probably not my first recollection. 1916. 1916, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. uh, there were a few cars. The man across the street had a car, Mr. J.W. Chambers, who was once mayor of New Cumberland, mm -hmm. had a car, and um, he would take us for a ride in the evening, and we'd ride down to Black Horse and back, which is about a mile. And that was a big that, deal. That was a two two mile trip. Now, what kind of a road was it? It was a brick road, all brick, and made locally. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I imagine the bricks were probably uh, supplied. Uh, uh, from the overstock of the brickyard. And the first brickyard, or the first brick street, was down where the Catholic Church is. Uh, uh, John Porter, who was an uncle of mine, lived there, and there was a large house with a wraparound porch, and he uh, uh, put this brick pavement in front of his house. And he also sent bricks, enough bricks, to pave a street in Cleveland. And what year, I don't know. But it surely must have been around 1905 to 15 or something like that. How would they ship the bricks to Cleveland? Uh, by rail, I imagine. Mm -hmm. We had railroad back in, I don't remember the year. I, Okay. Now, sis, what are your early remembrances of the town? Well, I remember walking to school and how wonderful it was to have so many friends that we picked up on the way. And there was a bake shop on 2nd Avenue, about three houses from where I lived. My uncle baked, built the house and built the bake shop. And it was so nice to walk up there. and. 
or even out on your back porch and smell all the fresh bread and mm, it was just a wonderful um, now how many how many children were in class with you did you have single classes yes mm -hmm. in the school up here yes we had single classes and it was a very interesting building I thought it had a lot of character uh, um, we had recess and the recesses were wonderful the teachers didn't go out with us and we could do what we wanted to do play the games we wanted to play and and we had we didn't have indoor plumbing oh no oh, oh no <laughs> so you went outside yeah yes <laughs> Yes, it is. Now, was this the Gravel Hill Academy? Yes. And they, they, when did, they, how did they manage to call it that? Was it? Oh, just somebody just thought that up along the way. Uh huh. There was a lot of gravel, you know, and the hill that's to the north of the school. There was a path, and it was covered with gravel. And you'd start down, and then you'd slide on the, so on the gravel. And that was the gravel. Somebody thing. along the way started that, you know, some. Now, how many classes were in the school? Eight grades? Eight grades. In no, high school. And in high school, too. But when it was started, there were just eight grades. Eight grades. Uh -huh. And there were only four buildings, the four, four rooms downstairs. It was a, the main part of the building was four rooms downstairs. And upstairs was a hall, I think was the way it was. And that was, and I don't know the year it was built. Then later on, they added two wings, the north and the south wing. And that's when I think they started the high school. And the janitor lived in the basement of the school. And Al, went, Al Wright. Mm -hmm. And you went outside to the bathroom. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Now, what did you go, where did you go for lunch? We came home. Oh. We went, <laughs> now, the country people, of course, brought their, walked into school. Some of them rode horseback. And uh, when I was in school, one girl drove to school. She had a truck, Ruth Bryan, had mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she drove to school. And what if I rode my horse to school, what would I do with my horse? Well, one fellow by the name of Ray Parker, we had a barn on the back, of, or a stable on the back of this yard, uh, on the back of this property, and he uh, would bring his, leave his horse there during school hours. Right. How far would he ride? Do you think? I don't remember Roughly. where Ray lived. I didn't either. Oh, he was about mm -hmm. my brother's age. He was yeah. five or six years old. Than mine. Okay. All right. Um, tell me about the lower town. Did you walk down to the river or did you ever play down there? Oh, we swam in the river. Okay. Um, did you swim in the river, No, we weren't allowed near the river. My oh. husband was born a house below the dam right on the river bank, and he wasn't even allowed to go to the river. Really? And why were you allowed to go swimming in the river? Well, the man across the street by the name of Stevens, Emil Stevens, um, uh, was a German who came here to work in the office at the brick company. He was a, he was a scholarly man. And if anybody in the neighborhood had trouble with their Latin or their algebra or geometry or whatever, they went to Mr. Stevens. And even French, he, he, he got us through French. Mm -hmm. He was great. He, uh, he, was, uh, he had gone to the gymnasium in mm -hmm. Germany. I think that's what he found. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, very knowledgeable. And he had a family. Um, Three boys and a girl, and the girl is my age, Mary. Um, he spelled, spelled his name S T E P H. E N, I think. Okay. Now, did you did you go to high school here? Yes. So you both went to high school, sure. and then after high school, where did you go? Margaret. I went to West Liberty College. Okay. And we just had to have a two-year certificate at that time. And then after I taught the country schools for five years, I was brought into New Cumberland. Tell me about a country school. Where would it be and how big would it be? 
the first country school I taught was Ferndale, and uh, I had eight grades. The first, the second time I'd been in a country school, and it was quite an experience. How old were you then? Nineteen. Uh, and I walked from Second Avenue in Cumberland up to the school and back every evening. How far would that be? Four miles. Oh, each way? Yes. And we had a pot bellied stove. It was a two room school, but we just used one room. But we, I, then I left and went out to Wiley Ridge to Jefferson Country School. And I just had six grades out there. When you had six grades, how many children roughly did you have? To have? I would say like 24 wow. in six grades. How did you manage to? Um, deal with all those levels and all those children. Well, you would teach first grade for maybe 15 minutes, and then you would give them something to do and go to second grade for 15 minutes, and and you just had to rotate. And sometimes the older children would help the younger children. And yeah. it, it was wonderful. The parents couldn't have been nicer. It was a wonderful experience. 19 years old and 24 children with eight grades. Oh <laughs> that is amazing. Mary, tell me about where you went to school after high school. I went to Bethany College. Okay. I got my AB degree and I went to Pitt and got uh, a master's. And I taught in Wellsburg for 10 years. I got home economics for 10 years. And then my brother went in service in 1942, and I came home to live, and I went to the uh, county office in Hancock County and the, uh, applied for a uh, substitute. And he said, well, we don't need a substitute. We need a teacher to teach science. And he said, you have a, you have a biology degree? And I said, yes, but I can't teach anything related to general, the general science courses. And he said, well, here, take the books home and we'll come over. <laughs> and that was Mr. Robinstein, a very fine man. Right. And I wish we had more like him today. And, uh, well, I should have said that. <laughs> and uh, uh, so then I uh, accepted the position and taught biology, seventh and eighth grade science. What would seventh and eighth grade science mean? Well, it was mostly natural science, you know, it uh, consisted of mostly of uh, um, uh, biology, or of botany, and a little um, uh, zoology, but not, not uh, very, not very uh, detailed, you know. This and some environment, some environmental studies, and studies about streams, I remember. And uh, that was in seventh grade. And uh, it was, uh, you didn't have too many guidelines in those days. You uh, it was very, very limited. You went ahead and. How many people would be in a class? Well, I had never had a class over 25 people when I came here. And I had 50 homeroom and 50 uh, in science in eighth grade. I didn't have as many in seventh, but it was a large class, but I had 50. And it was a room full of children, wall to wall. And my desk was practically backed up against the, the chalkboard. Had you ever thought of doing something else rather than being a teacher? <laughs> well, um, I, I don't know. I guess I hadn't thought too much about it. Uh -huh. After I came uh, was brought in here to teach school, I had to go back and get my degree before I could teach. And talking about big classes, I had, in, when I was teaching fourth grade, I had 48, and they were up around my desk, and that was quite an experience, too. <laughs> now, what year would that have been, roughly? I would say, like, 1950 50 or 51. Mm -hmm. What was, 
let's go back maybe to 1930. What was the difference between New Cumberland in the 20s and the 30s? Had the ridge changed much? Not too much yeah, then. We'd lost a good many trees along the way, mm -hmm. which lined the ridge. Uh -huh. uh, and the school was a different school building. What happened? It's, well, the, the school, or the old school building that we, uh, where we went to school, burned down. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the date? I think in 1936. Yeah, well, wait a minute. I think in that, that was... And the new school uh, is where we taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a smaller school than what they have now. I I don't know how many rooms there were in it, but it was elementary and high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, there were, then there were additions to it. What kind of social things were happening in the town at that point? We had the churches. Was there a movie theater in that store? Yes. We even had a Nickelodeon when I was little. It's where the laundromat is now. What is a Nickelodeon? You pay a nickel. pay a nickel. We had, they were just straight, the seats were just uh, straight chairs, chairs weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, I mean, that was wonderful, too. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It was wonderful. And um, somebody played the piano during mm -hmm. the, they were silent films. Yes. Oh, okay. So and nice. Mrs. Beck, I remember. Do you remember Mrs. Beck playing the piano? No, I remember. She lived in that young. Pearl, or, oh. I don't know. Bill Young's daughter. Hey, Hilda. Hilda. Where would, where would the silent movies be? In what building? In what, where the laundromat is now. Oh, that, oh, okay. that was, that was, yes. it, it was also called the Edison at one time. Right. I remember the name Edison on the front mm -hmm. of it, in sort of a half circle. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, but I think it's still called the nickel to go there. Before that, there was another little building by the blacksmith's shop in town. And it was very small, and they used to show silent movies in it before the Nickelodeon. Now tell me about the blacksmith's shop. Oh, I have that written down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where was that, and why did they need a blacksmith? Oh, my. There were a lot of to horses. To shoe horses. <laughs> yeah, a lot of horses. And um, it was where the Phillips building is now, downtown, where near Wicks. Okay. It was the, it was built for a bowling alley. Okay. Yeah, it's a long narrow building and they call it the Ewing building now. The doctor's in it. And the dentist Dr. West is in the building now. And that was a bowling alley. But be well, it was never used as a bowling alley. But before, it was built for that purpose. But before that it was a blacksmith? No, there not was the, a, not the building. But there that was, was old, the site. Yes, that was the site was of the Blacksmith shop. Excuse me, I'm sorry. It was an old brick building, or wooden building, the blacksmith shop. And the kids used to go down and they liked to watch him shoe the horses and fix the carriages that people brought in. And, and the kids, he had a stationary uh, bicycle, and many kids didn't have bikes. So we would go down at noon and ride the bicycle. And it was, it was just great. <laughs> now, what year, roughly, would that have been that the blacksmith was there? Just very roughly. In the 20s? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. He was there probably long before that, too. Oh, he was there before yeah, that. Yes, long before that. But, well, we, well, I was in school up at the, both elementary and high school, <laughs> uh, when the blacksmith shop was down there. Mm -hmm. So if I went down Station Hill, at the bottom of the hill there was a train station. Yes. On the left. How often did the train go? Tell me about the train. Well, there were morning and evening trains. Mm -hmm. I don't remember whether there were any noontime trains were there unless they were freight trains mm -hmm. going through. I don't remember any. But there were morning trains taking people out of town to work and to shop, and then they returned in the evening about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. and there was a, 
the people who lived uh, on Lower Ridge and Second and down in the south end of town got off the train at what was called Tanberry. It was a uh, stop there. It was a little, just a little tiny building. Um, a shelter. It wasn't a building. It was a little shelter. And then, of course, the train station on it. Most everybody rode to the station, though. Rode the train. Rode the train to the station and got off downtown oh, at the crossing. Okay. Um, and if you got off, if you got off the train. What was downtown like? The Grahams had their store then. No. No. That was the bank. Oh, that was in the, mm -hmm. the Graham building was a bank up until 1927 or 8. Okay. 1927, mm -hmm. the fall of 1927. So the building where the Ross building is now, the Ross store, mm -hmm. was the bank. The First National Bank. Part of it. Part of it. And that, there was a post office there at one time, too. The entrance that's on the side. So it was a post office. was where the post office was. So if you wanted mail, did you get delivery to your home? You no. went to the post office. Everybody went to the post office. Everybody. Where was the landing for the boats? Tell me what the what that looked like. Right out, right out the from Station Hill where you came down. Madison is that Madison? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there was a boat landing there, and that's where the uh, packet boats came in. And that is also where the show boats moored there. Describe for me, both of you, a packet boat and what the show boats look like. Well, the packet boats look very much like the Delta Queen, except they weren't as large. Really? And uh, I remember riding, uh, going up to the dam, and my brother in law got uh, uh, permission, and I assumed he paid, and we rode to East Liverpool and got off and my brother Jim drove my brother-in-law's car to Pittsburgh or to East Liverpool and we then we rode back home by car. And did you were, were you allowed to go on the river? Uh, I was allowed to go on the show boats. <laughs> and tell me about a show boat. Oh, they were wonderful. They had wonderful hacks and some of the, uh, the colleges would uh, be on the showboats in the summer, and they would um, have plays and Hiram. Uh, yeah. Hiram College was one yes. of the colleges that uh, sent their mm -hmm. uh, students here to to be uh, on the river on mm -hmm. the showboats. How long would the showboat be there? Just a few yes. nights. Yes, I don't think they stayed a week. Do they? Oh, I don't think so. But there would be showboats every so often, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a big event in town. Oh, yeah, that's oh. was majestic, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. So that would be what you did. Yes. What else did you do that was fun? Um, well, where did you go to a dance, or where did they have? At the community house. Yes. Was it the community mm -hmm. house was built along about 1922? And uh, yes, and it was built through the efforts of the women, mostly of New Cumberland. They, there had been a mother's club, and then they uh, changed it over. The club then became known as uh, the Community House Club, I think. And they sold uh, bricks. They were little, uh, I wish I had one now, but I don't. They were just little cardboard pictures of bricks. And uh, they sold those were tags, really. And they had tag days and sold the sold the bricks. And then we had well, down in the valley, what is Eaton Valley, in the newer part of it uh, was an athletic field, really. And that's where we used to on Fourth of July we had these great celebrations. And uh, we had our hometown talent. And uh, I mean. Um, they would have bands in, and they made several thousand dollars at those um, Fourth of July celebrations, and that money went to the, and it was pretty much clear there were some expenses, but 
That was the money that went to build the community house. The, the seed house, it's called now. The seed house. Okay. So, in, along Chester Street, was that sort of the main street downtown? Mm -hmm. Tell me how that looked. Uh, if I, there was no red light, I assume. <laughs> Um, no, in the center of the street there was a uh, a center piece, and I can't think of the name of it. A kiosk, kiosk. Uh -huh. I believe it was a, what you're calling kiosk, and um, you went around it. You didn't yeah. cut across the center of it. You went, had to go around the uh, kiosk. Do you remember that? No. Yeah. Um, that uh, I don't think was there too late. Mm -hmm. Probably sometime in the 20s it disappeared. Now, if you walked down to the railroad station and across the tracks, and there was the bank and the post office, what else was there? You see, store, just as you cross the railroad track on the right side, you see store, and then you came to the post office and the bank. What did you see store have? It was a general merchandise. Mm -hmm. It was mostly that good part of it was produce, wasn't it? And Mr. Fusey sell off the produce. I think so. So that would be where you go and get your food? Well, that was well, one of the places. Mm -hmm. Oh, there were a lot of stores yes. in town then. Were there when I was, tell me about that. Cause I, yeah. Do you remember Mackey's store oh, down? My, yes. Down mm -hmm. at Grant Street, where Grant Street is, there was Mackey's store, that long, low building on the west side of the ridge across from Bell McConnell's was a general store. Yes, it was Mackey's store. Mm -hmm. And they sold dry goods, too. Yes. Mm. And uh, then next door to it uh, was uh, another store, Milligan's. Mm -hmm. And that building is gone, but there's another one in its place. That's where, um, what's his name? Rick Staley. Yes. Rick Staley lives now. And where did they make ice cream? Well, that was later on in that same building that uh, mm -hmm. where Milligan's had the store. Uh -huh. um, Plants Buck? No, not Plants Buck. wasn't the first one. The Gilmers mm -hmm. uh, had a, a nice cream store there, and they sold a few groceries, you know. Now, downtown, though, what if I turn right? Well, tell me what it looked like around where the kiosk was. Well, across this, the caddy corner, where the quilt shop is now, was McNeil's grocery store. So that was a grocery store. That was a grocery store. And um, on the corner, across from Graham's, on the west side of Chester Street, was um, a boarding house. Jeremiah's. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah's. Now, if I went to the grocery store and I came home with my groceries, what kind of refrigeration did I have? What year would this be? In the 20s, we had ice boxes. Yeah. So you we're sitting right where we're we're sitting right where our, our ice box was. <laughs> and what could you keep in an ice box? Anything that you keep in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. But they weren't as cold as the present day refrigerators. Uh huh. But they were certainly quite a help. So and we had ice delivered uh, several times a week, and it was delivered by a Mr. Wilkin, who had um, a farm up on Ridge Road, past on past the cemetery, and he had three ponds. And when the when the ponds froze over in the winter, why it was quite an occasion to go up and see them cut the ice. And they have a nice house. That was, uh, the walls were uh, filled with sawdust, and uh, then they put sawdust in around the ice. And, and that as, would as stay they all store, As they stored it, you know, they that, the sawdust was the insulation. Mm -hmm. And so would you have it into the summertime? Oh, sure. So they would deliver it. They delivered ice. And I know that when they came down 2nd Avenue, um, that all the kids would run out of he would chip the ice. Someone wanted want a 25-pound, you know, why he would chip the ice, and then the kids would all 
grab the little pieces that were left. You know, it was, oh, it was wonderful. And we also, I think you should know, we also had a, a man that went around, Mr. Phillips, Matt Phillips' dad, that went around and collected rags and in a wagon, Morrison wagon, and he had, um, would collect um, like old pieces of metal that were laying around that the kids could uh, collect, you know, and he would weigh it and give you a couple pennies for it. We thought that was wonderful too. That is amazing. This, because now we have refrigerators and freezers and microwave ovens, <laughs> and this is 1997. So in 1920-something, there were ice boxes. No electric refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Now, we had electricity in the 20s. Okay. It was, um, at one time, there was a, I'm not talking too much. No, no we're not. Too fine. Um, <laughs> at one time, there was an electric light plant. And it's the building that is in back of city building. It's a large uh, brick building, and they uh, that was in the late eight, 1880s. Mm -hmm. And houses were wired for electricity. This house was wired then, but that only was in uh, operation a few years, and then we had to put gas in, or you used oil lamps. And uh, this house was had gas in it for lighting. And um, then uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where did they get the gas? Oh, from the wells that are out, out around this area. There were a lot of gas wells. Mm -hmm. You probably had gas wells up your way out, out. Now, how did you get the gas into your house? It was piped in. Okay, so there was a gas... There was a main gas line that ran uh, through the streets or the alleys. And our our gas was supplied by a uh, main... Uh, uh, was, the main was across the street under the sidewalk. And then there was a, a line brought across the street and the side street that ours... <coughs> pardon me, ours came from that. Now, there were no telephones, were there? Oh, yeah. Were there telephones? Oh, the telephones go back in New Carmel to the uh, 1900s or before. I don't know okay. when they were first put in. Right. Uh, my father had a telephone in his office, which is just up the ridge here, uh, a house that's across from where Everly's lived. It isn't occupied. It belongs to Dean Blackwell. And there was a, um, a telephone at the, at the brickyard. So. That's back. My father died in 1910, so it, you know, it has to be back in then. But it was in the 18-something, the late 1800s. I don't know when. Okay. And you had some old notes you wanted to tell me about. Some notes that okay. you oh, well. <laughs> One series on his own story. Okay. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, after you pass what is now Ross's store, there were three store buildings, and the first one uh, was a grocery store owned by Mike Solomon. And um, then uh, I don't know remember what was in the second mm -hmm. one when, uh, and then the drugstore C. Scott had a drugstore and uh, they had moved from upper town to that uh, store building and then next uh, there's a gray wooden building that uh, Graham's had a store what did Graham's store look like what did they sell they sold some groceries that was Doc Graham. That was Doc Graham. That was uh, Duker and Joe's father. And um, they uh, sold, um, what did they store in the back? Was it, uh, what was it? Uh, feed? I think they had feed, yes. 
and the feet stored in the back of that, uh, of the store, the store itself. Mm -hmm. And then we come to um, the what's called the Huff and, what we call when I was a kid the mm -hmm. Huff and Bloom building. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, there was an AMP star. An AMP. An AMP star. Atlantic and Pacific. And they start. We used to go down there to buy coffee. <laughs> and uh, and what was in the center section, I can't tell you at the moment, but the one on the, the, the storeroom on the corner was um, J.W. Chambers, Washi we called him. His middle name was Washington. And uh, he had a hardware store there. So that was all right there. Yeah. You had was the printing company across the street where it is now yes mm -hmm. and with the city hall there i uh, where the city hall i don't know that just uh is, it's i think a bit more of recent years okay and i was down there it was, it was yeah. that's where it was. oh okay mm -hmm. now as as you go up past the fireman's field what was there anything margaret can tell you about that her husband's family. What was mm -hmm. on that? Was it a field or a house? Yes, it was a cornfield. Corn field. And Mr. Campbell owned where the firemen are now, the field, and then he owned above the creek. And it was all corn and they peddled it around town. And I know my husband used to say that he had to hoe the corn while all the rest of the kids were playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, so that was a corn field yes. where all those houses are now? No. No. No, it's where the firemen field. Firemen field. Okay, then we well, went across the bridge. Was there a bridge? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's always yes. And then where, what was there? Well, the first house was Donovan's yes. house. There were just a couple houses mm -hmm. up along the main street, and on the other side there were three little houses. I don't know whether they were company houses or not. I think they must have been I built so. by a, a company. Now, the first one is torn down. There are just two of them yes, standing. right now. And uh, then on the corner, uh, on the corner of Pearl and Chester, the house is standing. Uh, that is where Dr. Vermont had his first offices. Okay. Now, when I go up Pearl Street to Chestnut, tell me how that looked. Well, there was an office across the street uh, on the corner of, of Pearl and Chester that um, was an old uh, brick building and uh, John D. Heron had his insurance mm -hmm. offices there, and I don't know what was there before that. In the old Mac store, or where, whatever it is that is, was the people store. What is that? Oh, that. Uh, That's a corner of Chestnut. Chestnut and Pearl. And Pearl. Mm -hmm. It's a large brick building with a mansard roof. Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? It's a very large building. Well, it's the front was changed. Well, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful store, though. It uh, sold groceries, and in the back, it had uh, a big section, mm -hmm. and it had big steps going up to the second floor, and they sold dry goods and shoes. And, and I, one reason I loved that store and Porter Evans that it was downtown. The reason I liked those stores were, especially at Christmas time, they would put out their Christmas things two weeks before Christmas. <laughs> and that's where we were allowed to go to see the Christmas toys. But And it meant so much to all the kids in town. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Man, it was wonderful. Two weeks before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was nice that way. You know, now the kids have toys all year round, and it doesn't mean as much. Mm -hmm. 
how how do you feel about having lived in the Cumberland all this time? It's wonderful. It's great. I wouldn't want to have lived any place else. Mm -hmm. People are nice, like Mary. <laughs> <laughs> like Sinister. It's just, uh, well, it's, it's been a great place day. to live, and I think it was a, always has been a good place to, to bring up a family. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's always been a community spirit, I think, a lot more so ne then than now. Mm -hmm. I think, in fact, we've lost a little of that because it was the whole community then. What we call upper town and downtown and all, and all around, Black Horse and all. Did people tend to work here? Yeah. So they weren't commuting to before the Before the mill, yes. Most of the work was in town. There were brickyards, and uh, then there was a Dorloy casting company. Uh, in the 20s and 30s, it's, uh, it left after the 36 flood, they, and the building suffered quite a bit of damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Tell me, before we finish, about the ferries, and how, how you got across the river. Snakey Marshall had the biggest ferry in town and it carried several cars and there was a big cable stretched from one shore to the other and he would had some kind of a tool that he would pull this big ferry across the boat across the river now if you had a cable across the river but it, it was on the bottom yes, until he lifted it yes uh -huh. it was on the and and as he would go across, you know, he would bring the, the cable up, but the boats could go over the cable. This would have been in yeah. the 20s, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Before the 20s, too. Yeah. The early yeah. part of the 20th yeah. century. And sometimes the, it couldn't run because of the ice in the river. And the people that worked across the river in the, the uh, power plant, or my dad used to uh, work at a clay mine over there, and they would have to row in a little stick across that river in the ice. My goodness. But the river wasn't as wide then. No, no. The, after they uh, put in the dams, uh -huh. uh, it um, brought the lo water level up, and that made it wider. And then after the, the second, after the newer dams were put in, that even now, when did they put in the first set of bands? Around 1910. About 1910. Okay. Now, what about... We were talking about the skiff. A skiff. What is a skiff? Rowboat. Mm -hmm. It's a wooden boat? Mm -hmm. It's a rowboat. That's uh -huh. what we call a rowboat. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And you, so you would go across the river. If you wanted to go across the river north or south of here, how far would you go? If you, but you, on the train, or, or, well, you didn't have cars. No, mm -hmm. there were passenger trains on the other side. And there was a, and we went to Liverpool shop, mm -hmm. or we went to Steubenville. Well, of course, there was a train on this side that took us to Steubenville. But then, if you wanted to go north to Wellsville, which was a shopping center, and, uh, at one time, and then he served, well, you served, you picked up the, the train on the other side. Because the roads between here and Chester were pretty awful. Mm -hmm. So you would get dressed up. Yep. You would get in a skiff. Oh, no. Go across the river? Well, I have done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if there were no uh, cars, sometimes Mr. Marshall would just take you in a skiff. Other times, if there were cars, you would go on the, you just ride on, ride on the automobile side, ferry. Yes. Oh. Hang on to the railing on the side of it. Well, there's another ferry, too, up beside the uh, foundry building. What do you call it? The, uh, what's down there, or what's yeah. down there? Air what? 
Air Products. Air Products. Um, there was a ferry there too, and that was Freeman's, I mean, Freeman's Ferry. Now, Psyche Marshalls was called. Can I think that's what I called it. I think we, we call it, uh, always spoke of it as Marshalls mm -hmm. Ferry, too. So that's how you would go. And I think there was another ferry uptown, but I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. Up near what's the Filson building, up near Pearl Street. See, there's a wharf there, you know, there's a... Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think there was a ferry there, too. Some place up in that area there was a ferry. Of course, one of the interesting things my mother told was about walking across the river in the summertime. Yeah, really? Yeah, the low, in mm -hmm. August, the level of the water would go so low that they could walk across. And then, of course, there was a part of it they had to wade, but it was, mm -hmm. wasn't that deep that they couldn't wade across. Did you ever cross the river, on, walk across the river on ice? Me? No. I did in <laughs> 1936. Did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I was in bed that <laughs> Way Dean. Yeah. Yeah. My husband was born in 1913, and they had to take him out over the roof of, and bring him up um, on the ridge, he and his mother. And then in 1936, Way Dean was born. These were the floods. Mm -hmm. Yes. 1936 was the biggest flood. And when it was coming in on the first floor, I wanted to come out. <laughs> so Wade brought us down to my mother's. With a baby. Mm -hmm. But we weren't able to do anything at that time, you know. So Mary could walk on the ice, but I <laughs> <laughs> I could hear it. I was oh, it was horrible. Yeah, I was teaching in Wellsburg. And my brother-in-law, Dr. McMullen, and my sister Jo, and their two children, and the doctor's sister and I walked across the river at noon one day. We uh, we had it all arranged that if that uh, they uh, we would drive down to the wharf, what is now the wharf at Wellsburg, at Sixth Street, and we crossed the river. We walked across, and the the ice was very thick. Oh yes. Oh, my. That was probably the thickest there's ever in the, my years along here. I don't know how thick it was, but it, there was no no danger. I mean, it was perfectly. There were a lot of people walking that day. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could have heard the ice, oh, it was horrible the way it was grinding, you know, making this noise. Did you? Well, no, you couldn't have heard it. But it was just horrible. Mm -hmm. When it broke up, it was, yeah. pretty, it was pretty awesome. Right. Well, thank you very much. I think that you've given us a little... You missed one block there, Ted. Okay, tell me about that. You, you took her up to uh, Chambers. There was a little restaurant on the other corner. And then there was the uh, Porter Supply. <clears throat> that was the other store that I did about the Christmas bringing out to these people. And then there was another building, and in the upper part of this building was the telephone office. And then the Graham store, the other Graham, Henry Graham, was had his store there. He had shoes and overalls and yes. it was men. Well, yes. They made an agreement that two Grahams when they came that they would open the stores, but one would have groceries and one would have other dry goods or men's supplies. And then there was a there was an alley, and then there was a house Warren lived in, and then the uh, Bradley funeral home. For the vets are now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think we learned a lot of things today. Very good. I don't know. I hope. <laughs> now, Alice may or may not have I, been taping this. I, I want to get a picture of you. Do uh, you want to... Here, come over here and sit. Go ahead and get a picture. I'll sit on that little chair. Oh, go on. Sit down. Oh, yeah, it's running. Oh, 
Who's going to take your picture, Alice? Uh, my name is Marie Converse, and I was asking some questions. And this is an effort that we're doing for a woman's club, and we're storing this in the library. Thank you.